I call Tenochtitlan the city of sacrifice because the origin myth of the city um, is about a great sacrifice that takes place um, at, a, at a sacred hill that becomes the, the model for the main pyramid of the city. And so the, the city's own origins is, comes out of, out of sacrifice. And uh, as in many religions, when you have a, a myth of origin, uh, subsequently people construct rituals that repeat the actions of the story of origin. And when they repeat these actions of the story of origin, they're doing two things. First of all, they are, in a sense, showing their devotion to the gods. That is, their actions repeat the gods' actions. And so there's clearly a religious meaning uh, to these kinds of sacrifices. But the second thing that takes place in any ritual repetition of a great creation story is that people are forming a community. That it's not just for the gods, it's for the humans themselves. It creates a solidarity for them. It creates solidarity because, first of all, it gives them a collective memory of where they come from and what's important to them. Secondly, in, actua, in, in participating in these rituals, they get to look at each other, they interact with each other, they touch each other, and it forms a kind of social cohesion. And so the sacrifices are not only for the gods, they're also for forming a stronger social bond between people. Uh, and that's where they get their identity from, these ritual repetitions of what the gods did. Yeah, so the question is, why did they get so carried away with it at the time of contact, okay? Um, well, the history of sacrifice in the Aztec, uh, in the Aztec world um, goes through the two periods of, of, a, of an increase of human sacrifice. The first real increase in human sacrifice takes place during the 15, 1450s, where the first Moctezuma is the ruler. And it appears that this increase in sacrifices is the result of a, of a drought that takes place, uh, where it looks as though the gods have turned away from the Aztecs. Um, and it appears that as a way of trying to win back the favor of the deities, especially those deities associated with uh, fertility and rain, that the Aztecs uh, increase their sacrifices. The second period where there seems to be a kind of frenzy of sacrifice takes place really when the Spaniards arrive. Um, as the Spaniards arrive, make their way up the coast to Veracruz and begin to penetrate the edges of the Aztec Empire, the words come that the new alliances are being formed against the Aztecs by the Spaniards and other indigenous communities. And um, as these alliances come to be formed and, uh, and eventually military skirmishes between the Aztecs and the Spanish and their, their tremendous number of allies, uh, the Aztecs again turn to their deities uh, and ask for uh, divine help in combating this, uh, this basically this, this bicultural army that is attacking them. So it appears that in the crisis of the empire, when either there is an agricultural crisis or a military crisis, that uh, sacrifices do increase as a way of trying to bring the power of the sacrifices into the city, fortifying it against these, uh, uh, these dilemmas and these uh, terrible uh, threats. In order to understand uh, the Aztec city, and I think especially the whole question of embedded stones, you've got to think about the notion of sacred space in the Aztec world. For the Aztecs, um, any space could be sacred, but especially the earth was sacred. The earth was the place where not only the ancestors lived, it was the place where many of the gods came from, and it was a place out of which the gods would keep coming back to visit human beings. So, trees and water and stones and hills were all understood to be impregnated with a kind of sacred potency. Um, and especially when a god appeared at a certain location or there was some amazing astronomical event associated with a certain hill, in the Aztec world that would become a sacred place. And if, inevitably people would build some kind of shrine at that sacred place as, as a way of sort of connecting the natural sacred landscape to the cultural creation at that sacred location. And here you get uh, pyramids, you get temples, you get shrines, you get altars built. Um, now what happens in any society, as time passes, new generations come along, and uh, in many cases, the new generation 
uh, remembers that there was some sacred event, some astronomical uh, appearance, some kind of divine um, uh, action at that location. Uh, and they want to remember that. And they want to, so they go back to that sacred place and a new ruler comes into power or a new governor. Uh, and what they do is they'll renew their commitment to that sacred location. And often what they do is they, in Mesoamerica, they would superimpose the new generation's commitment to the sacred place with a building built right on top of the previous building. Now, when they build a new building on top of the previous building, what they're saying, and I think this is crucial for the notion of embedded stones, what they're saying is that we are remembering our foundations. And our foundations are always associated with some sort of divine event, some astronomical orientation, some sacred meaning that is associated with this place. And, and our present reality depends upon that kind of foundation. So we celebrate it and reiterate it and repeat it. And so what you have, for instance, in many of these uh, sacred cities is buildings uh, that are superimposed on the previous building, superimposed on the, the next one is superimposed. So you have a kind of series of boxes uh, where the foundation is reiterated, re-celebrated, but also, and this is very important, also there is always an enlargement. The superimposition enlarges and, and makes the contemporary generation uh, appear to be even more devoted, more successful in celebrating the deity. And so you have both this notion of foundation and enlargement. And I think that's what's crucial to understanding the way that the Aztecs um, superimposed one uh, building on an earlier one. Uh, they were both thinking about the past and they were also thinking about, in a sense, celebrating their present prestige.